In today's Urbandum video, we are shedding light onto another forgotten secret in the city of Manchester. Within an unassuming brutalist tower, we come across many abandoned laboratories dating back to the 1960s that were formerly used by the University of Manchester's science department. Floors and floors, hallways and hallways of untouched decaying education left free of vandalism with working electricity. Join us as we step inside to see what remains. Alistair, what? have you heard that 85% of people are not subscribed? Are you joking? They need to hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell to never miss a video. It is autumn 2022 and we have been monitoring this relatively uninteresting tower block in central Manchester for over a year. Kept under surveillance by the university's security, until today the property was always sealed tight. However, things had finally changed and we were full of curiosity to check it out, having seen next to nothing from the interior. The property, known as the Faraday Building, had been constructed in 1967, purpose built for the University of Manchester's School of Chemistry, so we had high hopes for what could lay inside. everyone. Last night, myself and Theo managed to crack this gigantic building, um, but it was too dark to film. So today I'm back um, with Ollie upstairs taking photos to see what is left properly. It's an old university building um, and we, well, we know from what we saw last night that there's some labs but it was very hard to see. Look at this here. I wonder if these would have lit up. Old notice board. Currently in the basement, so it's never going to be too good. It's a large open room here. You can see the uh, the crane or um, pulley bends around there and would head out those two massive doors, probably where stuff would have been imported into the uni. Infrared ultraviolet apparently in here. Looks quite stripped, but I wouldn't say trashed. Looks as if some work was attempted to be done and then they kind of just let it, let it go. Clearly some form of lab, you can tell by the little taps. A very tall ceiling as well. Look how high the staircase goes. Can't even see the top, but it's crazy. I think this building is like 12 or 13 storeys. So sewer. An urban explorer, it stands out like a sore thumb. This looks better. Student union notices there. You can see tables here. Oh, it's a lecture theatre. Quite modern, but still cool, especially with the stuff on the uh, chalkboard still. 
The lecture theatre was nice enough, but was a worrying sign that the site may have been modernised prior to closing with up-to-date furniture. So yeah, there'd be a projector. Probably wouldn't be an old one. Look at the floor. It's strange when a modern building starts to look like this. Yeah, that's the projector room there. Nothing of all left. It's a bit of a stiff door. Let's continue anyway. I like the floor here. Looks quite dated. I feel like this would have been a canteen. Totally void of any detail though in terms of furniture. Yeah, for sure. This is where they would have served the food and then there would have been seats back there. Look at these lockers. Very cool. Super duper old. Signs of decay in this one, with the paint very close to dropping off from the ceiling. A bit of it has on the far right corner there. From the uh, sockets on the walls, I'd think this would be a classroom as well. Just working our way back along the corridor uh, from the rooms we just crossed through there. I just noted these booths kind of things and I wasn't really sure what they were. And then look at this. Old sign saying public telephones. You wouldn't see that in university today. This here is cool too. Would have been like a reception. You can see all the keys back there still intact, still there. And um, this proves that the power's on. If I turn my lights on, you can see that red light all the way down the corridor. We were starting to see examples of what we would expect in an old fashioned educational site. With the complex reaching 12 floors, there was surely bound to be more 60s details. So this is first aid. Tell you, it's from the uh, medical trolley there. This is the main room there. Has a ward curtain. And little else, to be honest. There's a cabinet there where medicines and uh, other useful instruments will be kept. A sliding door. And the power works for sure. And we have this one light in this room. The others have clearly gone, but it's a good sign for the rest of the building. I don't think I need a torch from here. Just the lower floors that were boarded. Maybe shows off the paint scheme now with the natural light coming in. Oh, actually, I might need it for this corridor. Okay. Very different again. It looks slightly more dated. All these warning signs. Okay, this is cool. Really, really dated wooden floor buckling. And the chambers around the room are that dark wood too. It's just the middle benches that Look more modern. Really interesting though. I can see there's another one the other way. Huge space for labs. So 
hooks for lab coats. Not too many of the lights work to be honest. More work in that room we were just in. To be fair, I thought this led round into this uh, classroom, but maybe just a viewing window. Little pockets of light coming out from these rooms. Looks really cool and atmospheric. There's nothing in them though. Void of everything. Department of Instrumentation and Analytical Science. Clearly just offices for some of the doctors that probably lectured in this building. These lockers, these are proper ones. It's 500 plus. Something about dated schools that are really cool. You can see the implement of the drop down ceiling here and the gap between the higher ceiling. This one, however, I'm not too upset about because they do seem to be preserving a lot of the older details. Corridors are endless. Stretches the full length of the building. One more floor up. Look at the contrast. It's like it's getting older the more we go up. Our labs. Wow. Holy shit. Oh my god. Okay, these are the nicest ones yet. All wooden. This is so cool. All complements each other very well. The white walls, ceiling really contrast with these dark wooden benches and the floor too. It was as if we had travelled to an era of the past. The labs were a total time warp, yet with minimal deterioration and no vandalism. In some cases, with the power functioning, it felt as if we had arrived too early for a class in the 1980s. Some of the room's remnants have been shoved on the floor here. There's probably a lab coat there. Inside all the cupboards there is nothing. They've been ransacked. It's probably not within the law to um, leave chemicals and stuff like that. Just left inside an abandoned building. We can still see the signs for what was in here though. Large steel hot plate steam bath. <laughs> Ultrasonic bath over there. Feels like a real step back in time. Just 
when you think that's it. In this room, there's one that's almost twice the size. The same vintage benches. The only difference I can see is that there's a bit more decay and you have these kind of setups here where stuff would be uh, hooked onto. What's crazy though, even though this is quite dilapidated, all the power is still working. I could turn it on for this room and I probably will in a second. Like these chemical chambers, here you can see there won't be a way to put them back on. A you know, fume cupboard is the proper name. Just flashing, it's very bizarre. The School of Chemistry occupied the premises until mid-2007, which is when we presume many of the floors were closed off and began to decay. Other science-related courses continued to use some regions of the structure for another decade, until Manchester University started to mothball its north campus, which is why there is a strange mix of old and new. This decay is so nice. It is the perfect minimal level that I love. Old monitor here. It's a shame that these offices aren't more like arranged. I've barely seen any chairs in this building. They're really cool. Imagine if it was just untouched with all the stuff in the labs as well. Do you get a great view over Manchester though? And this is only gonna get better as we get higher up. Obviously, uh, health and safety is paramount. Every single corridor has emergency apparatus. Seen so many first aid signs as well. We moved up another floor from the really dated labs. And this one's probably been the most disappointing yet. It's still quite old, but there's not really anything in here. Well, that being said, there's another old fashioned one. This one's cool as well. I like when the benches lead all the way up to the window and there's no gap. Some interesting uh, bits and pieces here too. The periodic table is up on the wall and you've got a notice board. Back room here looks completely empty. Just a few more fume cupboards. What might not come across in our walkthrough is just how many laboratories were in the building. As many looked near identical, we only filmed the more unique and best ones, but there were countless, each from differentiating time periods. Architects has changed on this floor sort of offices there that reminds me of some sort of business. And this lab is truly nothing in comparison to the others. Absolutely been obliterated. And I wonder why this modern one has been, but some of the old ones remain perfectly intact. to spend long in here. You can hear some sort of fire alarm going off. On the door it said this was the study area. And that is exactly what it looks like. I wonder if these upper floors were used more recently than the ones on the ground? Strange that that would be the case, it's usually the further up you go, the older it gets, but all of a sudden it's switched back to quite modern. Let's 
just another stripped lab. Even worse than the other one, actually. And then just like that, back to old. It's just that one corridor we just crossed through there. We've just been an illusion. It's a smaller one though. Maybe for more serious experiments and tests. In the uh, fume cupboard, it does say out of service, but it looks a bit hazardous there. Don't know if that's mold or the remains of something that was spilt. Gaining height as we clambered up level after level, the science department wasn't losing our attention, with every room containing something interesting that we hadn't seen before. We did notice that some stripping of materials had commenced, but whether this was from scrap metal thieves or from 2016, when a neighbouring facility was demolished, we couldn't be certain. So many old newspapers dotted around these desks. 1995, and again. Six there. Not too old, but interesting because I feel like um, a lot of these rooms and floors closed at different times, so trying to piece together our own story for that. Corridor's been painted a light blue colour here. Carpeted lab. I feel like surely that means it was repurposed. Again, you've got those benches that are right up against the wall. Slightly different design. I might put emphasis on slightly. If you are reading this, you are the last person in Manchester. We've created something we found. We've we couldn't control, and it's and now, it's, now loose. it's loose. I don't know how long can survive. I hear them coming through the windows. <laughs> God forgive us. I think this is a student or a, <laughs> I think it, a trespasser. Yeah, it must be a student. Of the uh, art in the bottom right. Yeah. Well. Oh, the drop down ceiling's gone. You can see like the individual concrete girders that are the foundations of the building. Don't think that was intentional. You can almost see where at the top of the um, the wall there it changes to concrete, which is probably where the ceiling was. Slightly different lab with no uh, taps in the middle benches. And it's quite quite long too. Ollie must have been in here for the lights to be on already. And he just forgot to turn them off. It's like a classroom. And an older chalkboard. And this one hasn't been uh, plastered with tags and stuff. Still got the algorithms uh, and maths on it. That was original. Oh, 
Ollie spotted this in the corner of the room. Looks really interesting. Permissible live load of the room is 200 pounds. Um, and that includes the weight of the benches and the equipment. And it says down here, if the room layout is changed, and I guess the benches are moved, um, the calculations must be checked again by the estates department, which is crazy. I feel like that sort of thing would have been thought about uh, way before the building was even made. And the fact that they have a, a weight limit for a classroom, it's almost concerning, but I guess that's how it was uh, 20, 30 years ago. Almost at the top floor now. Corridors are just identical at this point. Here's another classroom. This one's even more organised than the one downstairs. With the tables set up. It's a shame there's no chairs, to be honest. I think what makes this building, really, is that it's stayed in a quite a clean condition. There's a few bits of graffiti, but barely anything, really. And this is where it's located, smack bang in the centre of a city. It's blatant to most people that it's abandoned. Um, but somehow it's stayed unscathed and intact in most rooms. It's just uncommon. I believe we're very close to the top. Seems like the decay is increasing up here. Yeah, look at this. Just chip in from that top ceiling and drop into the floor. I love when it deteriorates like this. As we entered one of the floors close to the roof, the decay was stunning, very minimalistic but contrasting in a photogenic way against the dark wooden desks and the black taps. Again, the ceiling is amazing. A huge board here with a process on. And I'm going to begin to explain to you what process that is. stripped in here but the chipping paint makes it very close to the top floor just got my light out because um, it seems very dark up here as if there's not going to be any windows yeah again the layout is extremely different this is the estates department what that poster referred to downstairs this is just a huge water tank. We've seen it at another school before, also in Manchester to be fair, um, where the industrial bit was on the top floor. I wonder if this would be similar. See this pipe's fallen down and is now blocking the path. I feel like this bit hasn't been used in a long, long time. Such a skinny corridor. You can see things down there. Oh, this is really cool. It's a storage space, but you can see the old monitors and other interesting artifacts, to be fair. Some of the flasks that have been missing from the laboratories. Oh yeah, this is just tons of old things.
If someone could tell me what this is, because I'm really interested. I have no idea. This top floor might be the most interesting one we've come across because I feel like it's sat untouched for decades. Whilst everything else kind of kept moving. These old server panels maybe? That looks like a recorder to be fair. Look at this stuff. More labs too. This fake wall was added in at some point. I wonder why the fume covers are all lined up against that wall. It's a shame the power doesn't work in this section, to be honest. But very, very dated. No drop down ceiling, no sign of it. Signs here that are on the lower floors too. Must have been made at around the same time. Ah, oh, this looks good. Got huge fume cupboards. Wow. The decay as well. It's like the mix of a, a lab and a workshop. Love the um, old extractor fans, they look extremely dated. Really give the room like a sci-fi vibe. This laboratory appeared to be one of the oldest we had seen, probably sealed off for a long time judging from the decay, maybe even before the chemistry school exited the Faraday building. Trolley. It's got a drain in every room. Gives you an idea of the sort of things they'd be doing. This one again with the old extractor fans. It's very strange. I've never seen fume cupboards like this, if that's what you'd even call them. I think I know where we are now. Holy oh, shit. The first thing I notice is that it is freezing up there. But the views will definitely make up for it. It's been some explore, really. The fact that something like this can sit idle for so long and no one really knows, even though it is visible for miles, is always crazy to me. Um, it's actually been one of my favorites, to be honest. I love going through old buildings, especially in like live campuses or like hospital sites or industrial parks. Jesus, what a view to end it. Gazing over the city during the misty morning, we were very satisfied with arguably one of the most fascinating educational abandonments we had ever seen. Looking at buildings galore in front of us, with Manchester constantly changing, we were imagining what other properties could feature secrets of the past, and how long it would be before we would find another that captivated us as much as this had. The University of Manchester is under major development at the moment, losing much of their history for new advances, 
there are no plans for Faraday currently, so it sits idle for now, a staple on the city's skyline as buildings alike come crashing down and glass towers rise to dominion. Here are some of our photographs captured from the abandoned science block. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description where we share images from places months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing one of our favourite discoveries from last year. We are very close to making some huge announcements. See you next time.